citing some statements by uh, County Executive uh, Tony Preckwinkle, by um, the Chief Judge Tim Evans, uh, implicitly uh, Kim Fox, the state's attorney, I assume, is implicated in this, uh, which is a, a soft on crime kind of uh, uh, let's uh, make excuses and so on. And I'm, I'm just wondering where that ideology comes from, because uh, these are not these are not stupid people. These are these people can look and see what's going on just like everybody else. It's it's uh, I'm reluctant to say that they're so uh, craven and cynical that uh, they they know, but nevertheless mouth these platitudes because they think it's going to get them elected or it's going to get them uh, favorable press or whatever. Um, aren't they also partly motivated by uh, a feeling that you can't solve the problem of disorder and, and, and criminal violence by locking up everybody? Uh, they don't want to see uh, uh, the Cook County Jail overflowing with these young uh, kids. Uh, they, they think mass incarceration is a real issue. Maybe they believe a little pie in the sky that social programs and spending more money will do some good, but it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, would it, for the business community to take a more uh, socially responsible uh, attitude toward uh, investing in opportunity, let it be Cory Brooks' mediated opportunity for the kids in the city. So is there not another side to this uh, law and order uh, issue? And, you know, we're pro enforcement. I am. I, You know, I am from the things that I've said in the show. I'm very worried about the consequences for ordinary people who cannot afford to move away from the problem and get their kids out of it. But uh, is just simply coming down with a hammer on the bad actors uh, a viable way of solving this problem? No, I agree with the impulse that we can't just arrest, convict, and incarcerate our way out of this. I think finding the middle ground is 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 the, you know, is the nirvana, the holy land here. I think that when people across the city are afraid to come out of their homes and go walk the streets of their own neighborhood, when downtown has now, in the first six weeks of 2022, turned into an accelerating crime zone, uh, on top of a record year that just came before it, um, there's a problem. So, for instance, bail reform, which was instituted by Chief Judge Tim Evans in Cook County in 2017, if it were applied to first-time nonviolent offenders uh, particularly, that's the easy one to agree to. Yeah, don't give someone high bail. Don't make them wait behind bars before trial. Um, if they're a first-time offender and it's a nonviolent crime. The problem is guys with multiple uh, gun law felonies under their belt, uh, you know, get busted for a new gun law violation and they get let out lickety split, you know, paying maybe $250 or $500 bail. All too often they'll go out and do something violent, uh, carjacking or up to and including murder. And... Then there's probation, Glenn. It's not just uh, this lightning rod of bail reform, which, as you know, was a huge issue in New York, L.A., and San Francisco, as well as Philadelphia. Uh, the conservative critique, you've heard many times that these are all prosecutors uh, to whom uh, intermediaries of George Soros have donated money, and I don't dismiss that. Um, that's a piece of this. There's a philosophy here, and it's rooted yeah. in it's rooted in aspirations, in a in a hope for social progress. I always want to run away from the idea of my opponent is a bad person, right? Yeah. And unfortunately, you get that a lot. I suppose on both sides, particularly from the left, though, if you talk about accountability. Reasons not to kill, reasons not to carjack, the role of parents, you know, you're a finger-wagging conservative dogmatist. So that's a real problem. We have a polarized dialogue, but no. So let's make probation work better. Um, but let's not have to hear about stories like Ella French, 
the Chicago police officer being killed during a traffic stop in August in Chicago on the south side by a man who was on probation for a felony. Let's not have to hear about Melissa Ortega, the eight-year-old girl in Little Village, Latino Mecca, um, just last month killed by a 16-year-old gangbanger who was on probation for three carjackings. Oh, and it was called intensive probation. Um, I wonder what constitutes probation these days. Let's not have to hear about another Michael Brown, 16 years old, slain this last week in Bronzeville uh, as he walked home uh, from his uh, Chicago Military Academy. Uh, uh, a high expectation city of Chicago high school, not even a charter high school, uh, slain by a suspect now charged who had um, numerous uh, prior offenses. And, uh, you know, let's not have to hear those stories. So let's make the social programs work. And that comes to vetting NGOs, something I talked about at the beginning. What are the performance data? How do you evaluate whether a violence prevention program is really doing its work? And there are different um, measures that are recommended by different people. Some say don't just look at the escalating uh, number of murders or number of carjackings each year, but instead look at the number of young men and women who go into a particular violence program, like say Chicago CRED, one that is run by Arne Duncan, uh, former President Obama's education secretary and now a likely candidate for Chicago mayor in 2023. Look at the number of young men and women they bring into their uh, program and then look at what percentage of those uh, people, you know, turn their lives around. And lives do get turned around sometimes. And also, we can't measure some of the success because these are carjackings that don't happen, right? These are murders that don't happen. So um, I uh, air do you know do you know the crime lab? Uh, I think that's what they call yeah. it at the University of Chicago. Jens Ludwig, uh, I think, is the guy who's running the show. My friend Harold mm -hmm. Pollock, a longtime friend of mine, who's a professor in the School of Social Service mm -hmm. Administration at the University of Chicago. Don't they do this kind of uh, programmatic evaluation work? And uh, to the extent that they do, what, what are they saying about separating the effective from the ineffective uh, crime prevention inter intervention uh, initiatives? I need to dig in deeper to that, and maybe they do too. Uh, there is important work being done at the U of C Crime Lab and also at Northwestern University by uh, a researcher named Andrew Papakristos. Uh, oh, who's yeah. Done some very significant granular analyses of who exactly it is that's involved yeah. in the shootings and how whom you associate with yeah. has a great, great impact on whether you end up with a bullet in you or fired at you. And, you know, it's people should look this guy up, Andrew Papakristos, because mm -hmm. I've seen some of these papers with the maps. You know, mm -hmm. the networking and, uh, you know, the gang affiliations and uh, who's killing whom. And it's a very tightly knit network of mutual affiliation. It's not like random, uh, mostly not like random. Uh, th there are, of course, random killings, but it's it's uh, a lot of it is uh, nested <clears throat> within the structure of affiliations amongst a relatively small number of people. You say five percent. And at one point, and I have to go back and double check this, at one point I read one published report that Papa Christos had, uh, and this was maybe several years back, estimated that there were about 100,000 gang members in Chicago. It, that might be a little high now, but if that were true, that would represent less than 5% of our total population of 2.7 million, and that goes to uh, you know, my coinage of the term, the t a tyranny of the minority. So most people, if you go down, you know, to Washington Heights or Roseland or Englewood or Chatham um, or Auburn Gresham, you'd be surprised how many solid-looking blocks, well-kept homes, 
uh, you know, small business people and others are going about their lives in an honorable and decent way. And they are law abiding, but they are also very scared. So it, it seems to me less of a stretch, less of a judgy moral thing. When you start to talk about parenting and the young men who've run off the rails, who are making this city, you know, a modern day terror dome, sort of this post-apocalyptic place, sadly, it's less judgy and it's less moral if you acknowledge at the same time that it's a very small minority and it just is what it is. But as to your point about um, better evaluation of the violence prevention programs, I think it's needed. I'm not aware of any definitive research which shows us how to evaluate. I, I want to dig deeper on that, but it's important now because the push is coming for more spending, even from the city budget on violence prevention programs. And myself, I cautiously endorse more spending by the city. What we've learned, uh, the people at the programs have learned that the private sector and the foundations, they're tapped out after three or four years. And they're like, look, you, you need to get taxpayer support for this. And they know that now at most of these programs, but the city has not really stepped up. They stepped up from about 36 million in 2020 to I think maybe about 80 million in Chicago in 2021. And there are people, including Arne Duncan, who are now calling for hundreds of millions to be invested. And when you're talking about uh, a city budget in the many billions, um, you know, maybe a hundred, couple of hundred million spent on some of the better violence prevention programs, if we can determine which ones those are. Maybe that's a fair thing to do. But at the same time, Glenn, it's not an either or thing. I think the mayor and the city council members, including now the six socialists on the city of Chicago council, up from one before six Twitter. out of what, 40? Out of 50, but there was only Six. one there was only one of them before 2019. So that's the direction our electorate is going in. If these aldermen, alder persons, excuse me, and the mayor would step up and use their bully pulpits to talk about parenting, you know, and what about parenting classes? They exist. Um, you know, I think the hard part is for you know, a lot of white people, they're just walking on eggshells, they're scared to death of being called racist because that's such a trope now. And I'm the guy, I'm the white Jewish guy here to say, look, you know, I've been to the South side. I've talked with black people in their homes, Latinos and in their workplaces. And frankly, conservative values live on the South side of Chicago and the West side of Chicago. Very few of these people would probably ever vote for a Republican or call themselves Republican but they echo the values of, you know, my grandmother, Glenn, and probably your grandmother, too. And they're like, daddy's got to be there. Parents got to watch over their children. Don't let your kids run wild. 